Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The deadline to submit wind and solar projects under government's latest procurement round has been extended by a month. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss this development. Hi Terence. Uh, no. How much renewables capacity is government seeking to procure? So in December they launched the latest bid window, bid window 7, and it's for 5,000 megawatts of solar and wind capacity. The bulk of that for wind, so 3,200 megawatt allocation for wind. So this follows bid window 6 where none of the wind allocation, also 3,200 megawatts, was procured at all. Um, and only 1,000 a a thousand megawatt of solar was, went across the line. And those projects aren't yet at financial close. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an important bid window because we know we had the big disruption since about 2014 seven years where we didn't procure anything. We then had a risk mitigation round that was only partially successful, um, actually mostly not successful with most of the, all the car power ships having lo lost their grid allocations. Then that uh, mostly unsuccessful bid window six. So this was about uh, after sort of looking at the rules again, trying to put this into some sort of shape that these projects can get across the line. And we launched in December um, uh, this round and uh, so there's a lot of attention being paid to it. What is the new deadline for bid submissions and what was the reason for the extension? So the new deadline is the end of May. Uh, it was originally the end of April and the main reason is uh, sort of a request from the bidders uh, as there was a bidders conference early uh, in, in the year and uh, the big issue here is getting cost estimate letters out of ESKIM for grid connection. So there was an uh, initial deadline in January and uh, that was extended into February. So that had a knock-on effect. So it gives ESCA more time to um, prepare the bid, uh, the cost estimate letters for these bidders. Um, and the other reason is that in January, ESCA put out a curtailment addendum to its grid c uh, capacity assessment. And that uh, has unlocked a certain amount of capacity in the Eastern and Western Cape. And I think the bidders needed to understand whether that was going to be in play for this round. And that has been confirmed that uh, the, the department or through the Independent Power Producer Office, that that uh, capacity is in play. So there's about uh, 3,400 megawatts available in the Eastern and uh, Western Cape. Most of that, 2,600 megawatts of that in the the Western Cape. Now I mentioned earlier bid window six, those projects mostly were in the Western Cape um, and they weren't able to get across the line uh, because what happened at the time is that uh, the, the market was being liberalised and private projects were approaching Eskom for uh, budget quotes and cost estimate letters and they were able to trump the, the public procurement projects in the process and there was no curtailment framework in place at that stage for a sort of the higher levels of curtailment, around 10%. So that meant uh, Eskom came back during bid window six and said, look, there's no remaining capacity left for connecting projects in the Western Cape, the Eastern Cape and the Northern Cape. And now with this curtailment addendum, there's now this 3,400 megawatts that's become available under that new framework and is available to bidders under bid window seven. What does this mean for other procurement rounds? Well, I think uh, bid window eight was supposed to be launched before the end of March. I think that there's going to be, uh, it's going to be difficult now, I think with this delay to meet that deadline. This has become a bit of a perennial thing now with South Africa's public procurement. We're always knocking it back, but it is only a month's uh, extension. So it's not a, a very long extension. And there's a lot happening in the space. You know, we're having to close bid window fire projects, risk mitigation, those are now being settled. We've also got the bid window six solar projects that need to close. So there's a lot uh, happening. Plus for the first time, we've had a battery storage round, which projects are having to get to financial close. And we've got another battery storage round in uh, uh, RFP launched. So that's underway. And we've got a, our first inaugural gas to power uh, uh, round, uh, which has number of <laughs> moving parts to it, and therefore a much longer gestation period in terms of the tender. 
So there's a lot on the plate of the IPP office. So I think we will see, I think we'll see the, the next renewables bid window for another 5,000 uh, uh, probably delayed as well. What is the anticipated outcome of this bid window? So I think there's going to be a lot of attention paid to whether uh, projects do get through uh, this bid window, especially in those areas where curtailment has been made available. There are no guarantees that we won't have a repeat, I think, of bid window 6. I think the efforts are being made to try and make sure the rules are in place that uh, there aren't these competing budget quotes versus cost est estimate letters and a mismatch in the, uh, the timing around that between private and public uh, projects. And Eskom's done a lot of work around getting that cleaned up, but we're still at the early stages of that and people, there'll be teething problems, no doubt. So it's very difficult to say, you know, will, I think the full uh, solar allocation will be taken up as it was last time because uh, th that's really the, the grid availability in the rest of the country where the solar resource is still good. There's still quite a lot of s s uh, grid capacity available, 19 gigawatts outside of those three provinces that are our wind-rich provinces. So now will bidders have been agile enough to realign their bids to the curtailment rules? It's not clear. Or will they have projects that are mature enough outside of those windrich projects in Pumalanga or elsewhere where they can put in wind project bids, it's not clear. And what that means for the tariffs is also going to be very interesting. So uh, I think it's really too, too soon to say whether the full wind allocation is going to be taken up. I think the full solar one will be taken up and also it's far too early to, see, to say whether the, whether the curtailment uh, being in play is going to shape this round or not. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.